Well, good morning and welcome to the Gathering Church Online. So happy to be here with you today. You know, we're just honored to have you worshiping with us today. If it's your first time joining us, man, we're so glad you're here. Thanks for checking us out today. We're going to be back in person in just a few weeks, you guys. Three more Sundays until we are back live and in person on February 21st, 2021. We're going to be celebrating our five-year anniversary as a church live at the YMCA. And so be making your plans now to get there, to be there with us, to worship. We're still going to be doing temperature checks and masks will be required, social distancing everywhere to make it as safe as we can, but we are ready to worship with you again. And if this is your first time checking us out today, you really need to experience it to know who we are and what it's all about. You know, I believe that the gathering is really about the culture uh, that we have. Our church exists to gather people around Jesus and make no mistake about it. Our number one goal is to lead people into new relationships with Jesus and to develop people who are in relationships with Jesus. But our mission is to gather people around Jesus and around one another because we really believe uh, that that it is about both, that we, we need to pursue Jesus with all that we are, but we also need to be in a real, authentic, vulnerable community, and one helps us do the other. At the Gathering Church, we're a family. And so being online has been tough for us. Let me encourage you to spend your Sunday morning right now in this season when we're online uh, with somebody who's maybe in your quarantine bubble or some friends that you've been friend that you've been able to see during this time, or if you haven't had any, maybe be thinking about how you can expand just a little bit, maybe just one or two relationships so that you can have someone come over on Sunday morning and worship together and learn together and just a couple of weeks, we're going to be starting up life groups again. I'd encourage you to join that. I believe you need it, that you need people to encourage you and challenge you and help you find freedom. You know, we, we just, we, we, we're doing everything that we can to be careful and exercise caution and care to listen to the authorities and, and the experts and all of that to protect you and protect ourselves during this pandemic. But we also believe your spiritual health has to take precedence, that we can't only focus on our physical health. We also have to be thinking about how we can grow and improve in our spiritual health. So wear a mask if you need to and get in a life group and find a group that meets outside if you want to. Just you need to be in community. Well, today we are wrapping up a series called Do Over. And uh, after this last year that we've had, we've felt like we needed a bit of a do over this year, that we needed to reboot a few areas of our lives. And today, We're going to finish this series, and then next week, uh, we're starting a brand new series called Under Pressure. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Under pressure. I'm so excited about it. You know, when I was in the Coast Guard, one of the things that I was responsible for on a ship was uh, the magazine sprinkler system, a bunch of pipes. And to find out how those pipes were doing, we'd do a pressure test. And that pressure test would show you what was leaking and where the weaknesses were. And I feel that we've just come through a very long pressure test. And so we're going to be examining some of our weaknesses and learning from some characters in the Bible who were put under pressure. It's going to be a great series. Make sure you come and join us for that. Today, as we wrap up our series do-over, I think we're going to need to, at least for one day, talk about an emotional do-over. An emotional do-over. And I know that that can mean a lot of things. So let me clarify. I think that for many of us, If not most of us, our emotional health took a big toll last year. In fact, there's data to back it up. The CDC released a study at the end of the year connecting the COVID-19 crisis to a mental health crisis rising at the same time. This past June, 41% of Americans that were in this big survey reported struggling with mental health or substance abuse. 41%. That's up threefold over 2019's statistics. Twice as many people reported suicidal thoughts in 2020 than did in 2019. 
we are in the middle of a mental health pandemic. I have a, a personal struggle, of ment- uh, a personal history of mental health struggles. When I was in my late teens and early 20s, I struggled with severe depression. Every single day was a battle. It was a battle to get out of bed. It was a battle to go through the routine. It was, one, it was a battle that I nearly lost on a few occasions. When I was 21 years old, I made an attempt at suicide. I gave my life to Jesus shortly after that and spent around a year following doing serious, hard work to find freedom. In 2016, I struggled with anxiety and depression again. I was uh, one year after we moved here to start our church. I'd been going full speed for years working to start this church. I had uh, been working two jobs before moving here. I was a youth pastor uh, at a local church, and I was also in the United States Coast Guard. And I was also planning all of the things that were required for us to start this church. I was raising interest and raising money to start the church and ended up where I was putting in around 80 hours hours a week over the course of two years. Then we had a baby. I got out of a nine-year military career, and we moved 2,000 miles all in the same month. When we started the church, I had no idea how to carry the weight of being a lead pastor. I tried to carry the burdens of every person in our church, and it nearly broke me. I started to fall apart in every area before submitting to a healing process to find freedom that lasted for around six months. This past summer, I struggled again. Nothing could have prepared any of us for what 2020 would bring. And from March to June, it just felt like one hit after the other. And by the time June came around, I felt like this dream in my heart, this thing that I'd have given my life to was falling apart at the seams. It felt like no matter what decision I made, somebody was upset about it. It felt like there was no good way to do what I was created to do. I was hearing the enemy in my mind over and over again saying, there's no use. You might as well just quit. I was tired of making decisions I was tired of the uncertainty and the changing routines. And in June, I felt ready to quit. But I've learned from the struggles I've had over the years, and I've added and implemented new things and new ways to deal with it. And by June, when I was really beginning to feel unhealthy, instead of falling apart like I have in the past, my support system activated and came around me pulled me out of it, helped me to find hope again, joy again, to get healthy in a much quicker way. I've been in counseling monthly since June. I meet regularly with a group of pastors who encourage me, care for me, and lead me well through this season. I've added in all these things that I've learned through the years, and I, I believe that the circumstances of this past year could have sent me into the same place that I've been in the past. However, today, I'm not perfect, but I'm feeling healthy and happy and hopeful and joyful. And what I want to do is share some of what I've learned through it all with you today and help us uh, who have been through this year and have fallen into that 41% of people struggling with depression or anxiety or uh, substance abuse or whatever it might be to come out of it and find freedom from it and be better prepared for the next one because we don't know what 2021 is going to bring yet. We don't know what's coming, but we do know that we've got an experience that we can learn from, from the last year, and that we can be better prepared for it than we were before. Here's one thing that I've learned through it all. We simply cannot ignore the importance of our emotional health. If we ignore it, it will falter and it may fail. Staying emotionally healthy requires us to stay spiritually healthy, but it also requires intentional discipline, attention, accountability, 
and sincere care, along with a desire to stay healthy. And in the seasons when you get emotionally unhealthy again, getting healthy again is never going to be instantaneous. It always takes time. And so we've got to submit to that process and allow it to change us. I want us to be emotionally healthy as a gathering of believers this year. And I think we get emotionally unhealthy in three different areas that I want to highlight today. Number one is poor maintenance and overwork. Poor maintenance and overwork. It leads us to, when we get unhealthy, this is always one of the things that kind of either causes it or comes along with it. Poor maintenance and overwork. For a long time, one of my hobbies was to fix up old Jeep Grand Wagoneers. I haven't talked about Jeep Grand Wagoneers in a long time. And if you've been in our church in a while, you know this. It's because I, I, I had a hard breakup with my last Jeep Grand Wagoneer. I haven't been ready to talk. Now I'm going to tell you. I used to get these Jeep Grand Wagoneers and I would fix them up and sell them for a profit. In fact, I've had nine Jeeps. Um, well, ten actually. And I don't count the last one because I didn't have to fix it at all. Uh, but I've had nine Jeeps that I bought and fixed up and four Land Cruisers that I bought and fixed up in this pursuit. And you know what I always would find when I would buy these low-valued, worn-out vehicles? You know what was true about all of them? They only needed some basic maintenance in order to operate the way they were made to operate. I would buy them and they'd be in rough shape. They'd be worn down, busted looking, and the value would be low. But it was only because their previous owners kept putting off whatever maintenance the vehicle needed. One by one, those maintenance needs would build up until the vehicle would just get tired. So I would come in, I'd buy this thing cheap, and I would just do basic maintenance Replace some worn out parts, clean up some leaks, clean out the interior, paint the exterior. And with just a little effort, these vehicles would sell for thousands more than I put into them. If you neglect the basic maintenance of your emotional health, you will begin to wear out. You will fade. You will get tired. You will get burned out. You will break down. And in a year where outside influences are constantly pushing us toward emotional health, poor emotional health, good maintenance is more important than ever. And since we're talking about cars, here's something else that I tend to do. I drive on the lines. I was just, I don't know what it is, but when I'm cruising down the interstate, I just always plant one tire right on that line, you know. If I'm, sometimes it's on the inside line and sometimes it's on the outside line. I just kind of use it as my guide. I put one tire right there on the line. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just how I drive. But I can tell you this, it drives my wife crazy. It gives her severe stress and anxiety. <laughs> She's an inch away from panic when I'm driving us anywhere. And here's why, here, here's my thing, is that I know that if I'm on the line, I'm okay. I'm on that line. I've got a solid four inches between me and any other car that goes by, which I feel like is plenty. That's, that's the distance between the two yellow lines. And I think if I'm on one yellow line, I got at least four inches between me and another car. Or if I'm on the outside line, I know that the shoulder is right there that's going to keep me from going off this mountain and into the ravine below. That's stressful for Rael. You know why? Because there's no margin. I'm not giving us any margin for error, any margin for mistakes, any margin for outside circumstances. No margin. I think we live in a culture that ignores our need for margin. That oftentimes we're, we're asked or, or maybe even on our own, we just stay right there on that line where there's no room for us to go in either direction. And we're just inches away from disaster at any minute. And it's been normalized. Even in a year where, where things are kind of falling away and falling aside, we still find ways to exist without margin in our lives. And it's dangerous. Second thing is past hurts and present pain. 
past hurts and present pain lead us to poor emotional health? Is this why you were so emotionally unhealthy this year? Is this what you need to change this year? This is such a common cause of breakdown in our minds and hearts that I don't even need to explain it too much. The title, and you you hear that title and, and something clicks inside. You're like, that's where I'm at. I get it. Yes, it's me. And many of us maybe are still really bitter about something in our past. Maybe we're angry at God because of a circumstance. Maybe we're bitter towards a person. Maybe the person that was supposed to help you, instead they hurt you. The person you were supposed to trust broke your trust. Maybe somebody that you loved has taught you what it really means to hate and to hurt. Maybe it was your fault. Maybe you're that person. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe you were the victim. But there's been a bitterness growing inside of you for a long time as a result. Maybe it's something you're dealing with right now this morning. There's an overarching present pain that's constantly existing in your life. Maybe it's depression or anger or anxiety or, or whatever it is. It's not getting any better. It's just constantly there. Maybe the pandemic started it. Maybe one of the many earth-shattering current events of the last year started it, triggered something that was already on edge in you. Maybe something was already weak or unhealthy in your life, and then when the world started to fall apart, so did that peace. And this was like the dominoes fell, and one thing caused another, and now you're just feeling absolutely crippled by what's happening in your heart and in your mind. And you just feel unhealthy and it feels like the whole world is falling apart. Or maybe for you, the thing that's led you into real emotional unhealth after this year that we've just lived through is very simply sin. Sin. Maybe you're emotionally unhealthy because of sin. Sin is defined as something that stands in opposition to the character or commands of God. Sometimes we call them mistakes or just bad habits, addictions. But I believe we should just call a spade a spade. It's a sin. And nothing can lead to greater pain and brokenness than sin. Sin leads to emotional, spiritual, and physical death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. It's what it earns. It's what it always gathers. Maybe it's something in your heart that's been unconfessed, uh, some secret habit nobody knows about that's tearing at you little by little, day by day. Maybe it's something that was secret and then became very public. And then the shame and the guilt of that moment, that day, that conversation are overwhelming to you. Maybe it's something that you're not even ready to admit is sin, but deep down in your heart. And if you're a follower of Jesus, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is, is telling you that it's sin. And you can feel it and you would never say it out loud. And you're, there's a struggle. It's not. This isn't sin. This is okay. This is normal. This is whatever. This is that. But it's sin. And it's taken its toll on your heart and on your mind. When we do any of these things, when we live in sin, or when we struggle with our present pain and our past hurts, when, when the circumstances lead us into this place, when we're in any of these moments, when we neglect maintenance and margin in our lives, our emotional health suffers. And it has reaching consequences throughout every part of our lives. It bleeds into our spiritual health. It bleeds into our physical health. It affects our joy, our peace, our rest, all things that God created for us to enjoy. It distracts us from the purpose we were made for. 
It affects the relationships in our lives. It affects our marriages, our kids, our friendships. Poor emotional health bleeds onto everything. It affects our ability to discover God's purpose in our lives. The more unhealthy we get emotionally, the harder it is for us to do exactly what we were created to do and make a difference. In the book of Romans, Paul is writing a handbook on Christianity to the believers in Rome. In chapter 12, verse 2, he says this, Do not conform to the pattern of this world. You know, living in a constant state of poor emotional health did not start with the pandemic. It may have made it worse, and honestly, it may have just made more people honest about it. But it's nothing new. It's a part of the brokenness of the human condition. It's normal for our friends and neighbors to be so busy that they don't have time to rest. It's normal in our culture uh, to be constantly telling jokes or, or belittling the fact that everyone is depressed and anxious all of the time. It's normal to be on the edge of breaking down. We go out and we get drunk with our friends. We laugh about it on the weekends. And it's a shared experience, all of our poor emotional health. I think it's time for us to stop sharing that experience. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. New year, new me. New year, new you. Is that what you want? Is that your mantra this year? People are actually nervous, I think, about mantras this year after last year. Last year, everybody was like, I got 2020 vision for 2020, and that did not work out for you. In fact, everybody who was saying that, shame on you. How dare you? You didn't. No, I'm just kidding. But listen, we, we, we get this idea, hey, a new year's a fresh start for me. A new year's a good jumping off point to change things and to have a, a new beginning for me. New year new me. If you want to be made new, you can be. You can be transformed. And guess where it starts? It's be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Paul tells us we need to begin our transformation into being less like the world and more like Christ by starting with the state of our minds, what I would call our emotional health. And then look what happens. It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. If your emotional health improves, so too will your spiritual health. When your mind is clear and renewed and purpose-driven, you will have a better relationship with God, a better understanding of why you're on this earth, a better understanding of how to execute that, what to do, how to live. And it'll bleed out into every area of your life. So let's decide right now that this is going to be our do-over year. No matter what 2021 brings our way, we're not going to be in that 41% this year. Let's establish practices right now that will help keep us healthy and moving forward all year long. These are the things that I've learned and focused on through the years as I've gone through struggles like this. And I can tell you this, each time I feel myself moving towards that place again, these are the things that really help and bring me back. So here's three things we can do to improve our emotional health this year. First, let's build margins and rhythms. Let's build margins and rhythms. The margin is something that we tend to over, undervalue these days. Leviticus 23, 22 gives us this principle of margin. It's the first place it kind of appears in the Bible. It's this Old Testament law about farming, but there's this important principle that we can glean from it. The law required the farmers to leave the edge of their field unharvested. And this was their form of welfare. By leaving margin in their crops, they were able to give out those margins. People could come and harvest them who didn't have anything of their own. Their generosity was dependent upon these margins. And it's the same way our generosity works. We need to create margin for generosity. Well, we just talked about finances last week. This week, we're talking about your emotional health. So let's talk about some margin in our emotional health. Here's how we can create some. First, 
Let's say no to some good things and say yes to some great things. The the way that this looks has changed, I think, year over year. I I think 2021 has us saying saying yes to different kinds of things. You may be thinking, what? I've got all kinds of margin in my life now. You know, I'm I'm at home all the time. Every restaurant is closed. The movie theaters are closed. My office has me working from home. What are you talking about saying no? There's no sports for my kids anymore. Anymore. There's no, there's no events. I'm at home. What are you talking about? Well, maybe uh, what you have done is what many of us tend to do, and that is when we're not intentional with our time, our margins just get filled up with junk. So maybe instead of having margin for great things, maybe instead of being able to say yes to great things, for example building a relationship. Maybe if you're not willing to be in a lot of relationships, you're, you're being safe. You've got your high risk, people around you are high risk. I get it. But maybe instead of being in a lot of relationships, we could be using our time to build maybe one, maybe two, and really have influence on somebody or really learn from somebody or to begin to actually grow and develop accountability and vulnerability. And, but instead, those are some great things, you know, great things. Great things like actually being intentional in your marriage. Great things. Being intentional with your kids. Great things. Studying God's Word and learning to pray like you never have before. Great things. We're saying yes to good things. Uh, Things that I like, like Netflix. You know, maybe you've said yes to more Netflix than ever before in your life this year. Maybe you've said yes to reading a book more than ever before in your life this year. Maybe you've said yes to house projects and hobbies and little things to keep you busy. And what's happened is you've kept yourself too busy for the things that actually matter. So it might be time, even if you don't think you need to, to evaluate what's going on in those margins. Create, say no to some good things so that we can say yes to some great things. Measure, don't guess. Measure, don't guess. This is a principle of margin. If your life feels out of control and your emotional health is at risk because you don't have the right margin or rhythm in your life, rhythm is another important thing. Uh, Rhythm and routine. So I'm a routine nut. You don't have to be like me, but I like a, I try to automate as much of my day as possible. There's a book called Atomic Habits 2.0, and that is how I live my life. If you want a window into my brain, read that book and it will help you. Uh, but rhythms are a little bit different than, than, than uh, routines. Rhythms are just making sure we go in a healthy direction with our time, that, that we do things like a uh, certain time of the month we budget, certain time of the week we, we have intentional conversations, certain time of the day we look our kids in the eye and add value to them, certain place, certain time where we study God's Word. These are the rhythms that will help us to uh, get into the healthy place emotionally that we need to be. And accountability rhythm is a good rhythm for your life. Uh, Having somebody who is constantly checking in on you and saying, I have two different guys that call me regularly and say, John Mark, how are you doing? Have have you, and they ask very specific questions to who I am and how I process the world. Get in these healthy rhythms and write them down and take captive every moment, every second of your day and know what's happening when. I budget my time like I do my money, very specifically. Maybe for you it makes more sense just to write out a bunch of possible rhythms for your life, different ways to create margin. And then an important role for margin is Sabbath. I think Sabbath is so important. And even, especially in a locked down world, Sabbath has to be intentional and has to be protected because now everything blends together. I work from home so I can work easily on a Sunday and I can go and punch away a little bit here and there, or I'm always here. So I'm always resting. So I don't feel like I need an intentional day for it. I still believe you need an intentional Sabbath in your life. Exodus 20 verse 8 through 11 says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That means set apart. 
Six days you shall do the labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And on it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. And in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. So the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he made it holy. He made it holy. I want to encourage you to take one day and make it holy. One rhythm that my family's had that's been very helpful has been to we declare one day our Sabbath. And this day is going to be the day that we protect and we're intentional and it's, it's set apart for us. And the day before it, we get ready. We do whatever shopping and chores, yard work, housework that needs to get done ahead of time so that on that day we can be intentional as a family and rest in a way that we rest best. Set some day apart in your week for Sabbath. Sabbath. Build some margin and some rhythms and it will help you to maintain good emotional health this year. Second, you need to find freedom from bitterness, anxiety, and depression. And this one's not an easy fix. It's not a quick thing you can do later today. It's work and it's hard work and it's painful work and it can take a long time. But if any of these things are a part of your life, You've got to find freedom from them. Find freedom. It just says in Isaiah 61, that, or Jesus says, in, repeats again in Luke chapter 4, that he came to bind up the brokenhearted. See, I believe it's his desire to say, he says he came to set the captive free. I believe it's his desire to heal these parts of your soul that feel broken. That he has freedom in mind for you and dreamed up for you and a plan for freedom for you. But it requires work. And so here's a threefold recommendation for how you can move into a season of freedom. First, get in community. We believe we find freedom in community around other followers of Jesus, someone you can actually be vulnerable with. And I mean real vulnerability, talking about what's actually going on in your heart. We need to come out of hiding a little bit. I think we've been forced into hiding. We've been forced into hiding emotionally. We've been forced into hiding with our, with our mental health. And we've been forced into hiding physically. I think it's time to peek our heads out of hiding a little bit to get healthy. Get in community. Get in community. Have some community. Second, listen to your doctor. Here's what I want to say about this. It'll be quick. If you disagree, that's fine. We don't have to agree about everything, but I think somebody might need to hear this today. Here's what I believe about medication. I believe that medication can help us to see clearly. Maybe you've been struggling with this for so long you can't see clearly anymore. You can't receive help. You can't get vulnerable. You can't be in community. You can't receive counseling because you can't see. And you might need something to help you see clearly. I don't believe that it's the only solution. I think there's a balance that has to exist. Don't be opposed to medication just because it's medication. It can help you. But it's also not the entire answer. Some people will have a, a permanent imbalance. That means they're always going to need medication to correct it. However... I think they also need to work through the reasons that they have that imbalance or the unhealthy ways that imbalance has led them to process their lives and they're going to need help from someone to figure that out. And that's why we may need to go to counseling. You may need to go to counseling. If you're one of these 41%, you've struggled with substance abuse this year. You may need help for that. You've struggled with uh, depression and anxiety in new ways this year. You may need help for that. You've struggled this year with suicidal thoughts. You need help for that. Counseling can change your life. I believe a licensed, professional, Christ-centered counselor can change your life. One changed mine. Rayelle and I went to marriage counseling in the fall of 2016. And it was one of the best decisions we've ever made. We weren't thinking about divorce. So many people think counseling is just the last step before that. We weren't there. We were just unhealthy, and we wanted to be healthy. We needed help. Since then, we've both gone to counseling individually, on and off, pretty much since 2016. It's made a huge difference for us. 
If you're unhealthy and you can't see a way out, those are three areas you can start. But for most of us who became a little bit emotionally unhealthy last year, there are some also other things that we can do. We're going to have to dig out the roots of this thing and take control of our thought life. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5 says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You need to take your thoughts captive. When you begin to tell yourself that you're worthless or that you can't do something or fear enters your mind or anger rooted in bitterness creeps in, we've got to take it captive and say, no, this is who Christ says I am. This is what the Bible says I am capable of. Jesus has says that he's come to bind up my broken heart and to set me free. I am not worthless. I have purpose and I have value. We've got to take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ or they will control us. And that doesn't have to be the way that it is. We can replace all of these thoughts with the promises of God. Look at Philippians chapter 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again. Rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God. When we learn to pray and tell these thoughts no and to tell the enemy no when he whispers these lies into our minds, when we bring those things to God, he replaces them with peace. And it's peace that passes all understanding and it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right and pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and the God of peace will be with you. Take your thoughts captive and replace them with the things of God and he will give you peace. That's a promise he's given you today. So don't let bitterness get a foothold in your life. Start a forgiveness process. Don't let depression tell you that it's not worth it. God says you have purpose in your creation. Go before him and he will give you rest and peace and understanding. He will give you the ability to rejoice when you feel like crying. Let's get healthy in this area this year. The last thing is this. You may need to find freedom from sin. You may need to find freedom from sin. And we believe that we find freedom in community. That's one of the functions of a life group. It's a place to build relationships where we can be vulnerable and gain accountability. We need to get involved in a life group. I I just believe this is so important. And, you know, I understand that there's there's some of of you that it's not possible for you or it's just not safe for you. And my heart's broken for you because I, I want this for you so bad. I understand, and I, and I can't guarantee anything, any physical safety. I can tell you that we're going to do our best to protect you, and you can do your best to protect yourself. Our spiritual health needs community. It's where we find freedom. It's where we can take our sin. It's where we can go and say, hey, I go, hey I'm struggling with this, and I need help. I don't know how to get out of it. We can build relationships that give us a place to be vulnerable and gain accountability. We have to have accountability so that we can begin to leave our lives of sin behind. James 5.16 says, when we confess our sins to one another and pray for each other, we will be healed. Healing exists in community. You can be free of this sin. You can be healed. It can be behind you. You don't have to carry the guilt and the shame of your sin, not for one more day. Because if you are in Christ Jesus, you are forgiven. There is no 
qualifiers. There's nothing, there's no buts. There's no work that you have to do. Jesus has done the work for you. And he doesn't just want you to be forgiven for the sin. He wants you to be free of it. It says that his chains will fall off of us. That he sets us free like a slave who's been walking in chains. All of a sudden having those chains removed so you can move freely again. He wants that for you. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from our unrighteousness. God is for you. He wants you to be whole and to be healthy, to enjoy this year. He is the God of do-overs. He, he's given you the greatest do-over you could ever imagine, and that is a do-over on this life. And He didn't go through all of that to give you a do-over to spend this whole next year unhealthy in your heart and in your mind and struggling with lies and self-doubt and guilt and shame. That's not who He made you to be. He's got bigger things in mind for you and a place that He wants you to go and a purpose He wants you to live in. He is for you. Let's get on a pathway to living out these dreams God has for us this year. Let's experience real health in our minds. Jesus makes it easy for us. Even when the work is hard, He promises to help us along the way. In Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Do you feel weary and burdened? Mm. I felt weary and burdened this year. Every time I turn on the news, all of it is so exhausting. The pandemic, the isolation, the constant change, having to make a new decision every single day, the hurt, the damage it's caused. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Don't you know that his rest is better than the rest you can come up with on your own? Don't you know that his rest is better than the rest you get from just ignoring the world in your room with the lights off, watching TV all? Don't you know his rest is complete, it's whole, it's full, it builds you up and fills you up? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He is for you. He is on your side. He wants you to be healthy. And I believe if we can take some of these things that we've learned along the way, if we can look back at, at what went wrong last year, the areas we lacked accountability, the areas where we, we, we did, allowed ourselves to go down the wrong pathway, a pathway of sin or a pathway of isolation, if we can learn from those things and just do it a little bit different this year, I believe that we can rise above those statistics, those percentages. And no matter what 2021 brings this way, we can rest in the peace of God this year. If you've never experienced the peace of God, let me tell you, there is nothing more complete, more whole, and more full, and you were made for it. Made to receive it. Made to enjoy it. Made to live in it. And so if you would like that today, all you have to do is say yes to what He's already invited you into if that's you, wherever you are, every head bowed, every eye closed, just say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I need rest. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for trying to do this on my own. Forgive me for all the ways I've messed it up. I just need you, God. I give myself to you. I come to you because I am weary. All that I am from this day forward is yours. In Jesus' name, amen.